Welcome to the latest edition of Prep Talk. This is Chris Park and my partner Marvin Hammerschmidt. You're listening to Prep Talk, the one and only weekly internet-based radio broadcast dedicated to high school sports for Eugene, Oregon. Marv, what's on our agenda today for Prep Talk? Well, we're going to review uh, last week's games, final uh, regular season games for the area high schools. Uh, Thurston uh, beat South Eugene, Sheldon beat Grants Pass, Cottage Grove over Sweet Home, Harrisburg over Pleasant Hill. The big 1A game of the week, Lowell uh, uh, outran Triangle Lake. And uh, see North Bend's over Sayus Law. We're also going to have an interview with Pleasant Hill co-head coach Kirk Miller, along with possibly a Stump Marvin question maybe thrown in there. There will definitely be a Stump Marvin question thrown in there, and uh, so get your thinking cap on for that. That's Mar Stump Marvin is our trivia time where I try to stump Marvin with a question or two, and, and if he gets close to getting the answer, I just cheat and change the question. So, <laughs> Well, uh, uh, good to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Pleasant Hill uh, co-head coach Kirk Miller, that's going to be a nice interview because Pleasant Hill is still in the uh, battle for the playoffs, so it'll be nice to get connected with him. I think our reader, our listeners excuse me, will enjoy that interview. That's coming up shortly, but before then, let's review a few games. Marv, I'll start with, um, I'll start with 4A. North Bend, 42, Sayus Law, 14. This was a big game down at North Bend Stadium there, Vic Adams Field. Over 3,000 in attendance. Um, North Bend spread attack just looked great. Over 500 yards of offense. Uh, North Bend gets the bye. Uh, they'll get a rest for the play-in round. Sayuslaw, first loss of the year. Uh, they'll get second in the Far West League. And can you believe that? That means they're going to have to go for a play-in game. So Amazing. as good a team as they, uh, they are, Sayuslaw will have to go to a play-in game. But I think they'll be okay. Um, great game for um, North Bend um, last week. Um, let's see. Do you have any more 4A scores? That's the only big review for 4A. Okay. Uh, 6A, Thurston, the big game, Thurston 20, South Eugene 7. Uh, Thurston got that last win that they were looking for. Uh, you know, we talked to Justin Stark a couple of weeks ago, and he really wanted to get uh, get on the winning track before the playoffs started, so he uh, he got his wish there. South Eugene's going to have a, a tough run. Uh, we're, we're, we'll go over uh, this week's playoff games coming up and some of the other games, um, so we'll talk a little bit more about them, but uh, good for uh, Thurston to get that win. I did forget to mention the other scores for 4A, Marvin. Cottage Grove 35, Sweet Home 14, and Elmira 35, Junction City 8. Those are the other 4A scores, my apologies. Oh, okay. Uh, in 5A, uh, Springfield 27, Churchill 10, uh, Willamette was idle, um, the game that I was at, uh, Marist 43, North Eugene 0. Uh, Marist uh, really kind of had their way with North Eugene. I was kind of surprised. North Eugene put up a fight, at least in the first half, against uh, uh, Springfield earlier in the year, and I just thought it was going to be uh, a little bit uh, more offense out of North Eugene than what I saw. But uh, Marist really played well on Friday night. Excellent. I've got a couple 3A scores. Uh, let's see. Salem Academy 55, Creswell 6, Harrisburg 24, Pleasant Hill 7. Um, Harrisburg looked good. They um, had multiple touchdowns in different ways. Kickoff return, fumble return, both for TDs, uh, passing touchdown. Um, overall, pretty good game. Harrisburg undefeated, in control of the Pac West. Pleasant Hill needs to win their last game in order to make the playoffs. Now, 3A still has a regular season game this week, is that right? 3A, 2A, and 1A all have one more game left, yes. Okay. Well, and, uh, my only thing to report in 2A was Oak Ridge was idle last week. Yeah, and I got some 1A scores. Mohawk 36, McKenzie 32. Uh, Silets Valley was 56, Mapleton 28, uh, Yoncala 70, Crow 26. Yoncala uh, will have their first playoff appearance since 2001. Oh, congratulations. They're 7 and 2. Um, and uh, Lowell 86, Triangle Lake 22. Um, Lowell scored 74 points, Marvin, in the first quarter. Wow. Yes, they were clicking on all cylinders. Uh, it was a running clock by the second half. Uh, Lowell 86, Triangle, Triangle Lake 22, just, Lowell is looking good. I just thought that that game was going to be way closer than that. Uh, just the way Triangle Lake had played up to this point, um, it just goes, I think it goes to show you just how good Lowell is this yes, year. Yes, they're very good, and that's, 
I think their preseason schedule has been helpful for them. You know, playing St. Paul and some other big schools that are some good schools because their league is their league's pretty good. But boy, Lowell's had to challenge themselves. Um, and I wonder how their defense is going to do uh, come when they face a really good team because they've sco- scored so many darn points. You know. Well, I know, but you know, the, thing, out there that much. the thing to consider there, though, is that I think they're going to go fairly deep in the playoffs before they see a team of their caliber. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, good football to be had. Yeah, absolutely. Say, so, hey, let's try a, a Stump Marvin question. Are you ready for that? I am. Let's uh, fire away. Okay. It's that time where we gather around LaneCountySportsOnline.com and slap on your thinking helmet. Time to stump Marvin. Okay, so as you know, we have an interview coming up with Pleasant Hill co-head coach Kirk Miller. Yes. So that might be your first clue about the question. It always is. You're, you're, you're that predictable. Yeah, yeah. So here's the question, Stump Marvin. We're trying to stump Marvin with some trivia. Marvin, can you name an NFL player who graduated from Pleasant Hill High School? And I, I have a feeling you're going to get this, so I'm going to have a backup question. <laughs> you know, I do know the answer to that question. Okay. That's Russ Francis. Yes, you got it. Very good. Yeah, played yeah. tight end. He yeah. played for the uh, played for the Ducks as well. And um, okay, well, I'm I not... believe the started. Started with the San Francisco 49ers, but ended his career, I believe, with the New England Patriots. Well, um, I'm going to have to go down four levels to my next level of questions since you keep answering the questions before I even <laughs> ask them, Marvin. Okay, so I have one last question related to Stump Marvin. You're, okay. you're scoring big time. You knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Well, how's this? Um, he, uh, Russ Francis is the correct answer. He held a state record. Uh, for uh, something while he was a Pleasant Hill High School athlete. Uh, can you uh, can you name the event? In fact, I'm going to give you a hint. It's in track and track. field. I yeah. figured it was yeah. in track. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember. He was a big guy even by any high school standard mm-hmm. when he was in high school. Now, he, he was in high school way, well before my time. Mm-hmm. i got to tell you that. I think he graduated in 71 or 2, I'm going to guess. Uh, 71, which would have been uh, yeah. Thurman Bell's first year at Rosemary yes. High School. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say he probably held the record for the javelin. Excellent, Marvin. Grand slam. Grand wow. slam. You got it right. 211 feet. It was uh, um, a record that stood for many, many years. Uh, it was eventually broken. I don't remember by who, but uh, wow, Marv, you did good. I, uh, I guess I'll have to get some tougher questions next time. Well, you know, um, there, there's just a lot of... I, I, you know, I grew up watching Russ Francis, and, uh, and of course, I, I'm a huge fan of uh, the Oregon Ducks. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there's just a lot of information about Russ Francis out there because he was just one of those special athletes that only comes around once in a while. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's the answer to our question. NFL player from Pleasant Hill High School is Russ Francis, class of 71. He actually uh, went to high school in Hawaii and transferred to Pleasant Hill for his senior year. Ended up going to the Ducks, and as you had mentioned, the uh, NFL. So, super job there, Marvin. Um, hey, thanks. I, you know, I, f- I feel tons smarter all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the same guy you were before we started the question, but you oh, did okay. get it right. So, congratulations. Next week's question will be much harder. Oh, boy, I can't and, wait. And I'll have to cheat for sure to make sure I get it right. <laughs> well, what do you say we take a break? Uh, we're going to be uh, right back with more on Prep Talk uh, with our interview. This is Chris Park and my partner, Marvin Hammerschmidt, uh, on Prep Talk. And we are speaking uh, this afternoon with Pleasant Hill co-head football coach Kirk Miller. Coach Miller, thank you for taking the time to sit down and um, talk some high school football with us. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, um, let's go through your background a little bit for our listeners. Can you tell us a little uh, about your background, perhaps um, expand on um, some of your background for our listeners? Sure. Um, let's see, out of college, I spent one year as an assistant coach at uh, Central High School under uh, Greg McAnally, and then uh, the next year I was hired on as the uh, head football coach at Regis High School, where I spent six years, um, had, uh, had uh, the pleasure and, and fortune to have some great kids and great athletes, and uh, we, in the six years there, we uh, made it to the state playoffs every year, went to the quarterfinals twice, the semifinals twice. 
and then the state championship twice. Um, then <clears throat> after that, I came over here to Pleasant Hill for a, a couple seasons. I think it was three. Um, then uh, spent uh, two football seasons at Harrisburg and then came back um, to Pleasant Hill with, with Randy Fisher. And he and I are now the co-head football coaches at Pleasant Hill. Great, great. Thank you. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the season so far this year. The Billies are four and five. You've had some really close losses early in the year. Um, le uh, let's see. Last week you lost at Harrisburg, twenty-four to seven. What are your thoughts about that game last week? Now that you've had a chance to maybe look at the film and in retrospect. Well, we played a very good football team. Um, Harrisburg is very good. They're they're undefeated. They're one of the top five, four or five teams in the state of Oregon. And um, and we knew we had to come with a with a good game plan and, and a good game, and we we felt like we did that. Um, unfortunately, we made a few mistakes. <clears throat> and when you play a good football team like Harrisburg, if you make mistakes, they make you pay for it. And they turned uh, turned a kickoff return for a touchdown and a fumble return for a touchdown and a, and a safety and uh, put us behind the eight ball early, and it and it made it tough to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, Coach, uh, uh, considering all that, what are you uh, and Randy Fisher emphasizing this week in practice? You know, we're, we're, not, we're very unclear as if we're going to make the playoffs. We've got to have some help from Blanchett. Uh, if they can beat Harrisburg, it gets us in. So we're, we're kind of going in with the mindset that we're not going to make the playoffs. So we're really focused on, on learning a little bit this week, but also having a lot of fun. Um, you know, when, you, when you're going out and this may be the last game, you want to make sure the kids are having fun so that as the, as the year goes on, they remember this last week and the fun that we had and, and all that stuff so that hopefully we can get all those kids back out again next year. Okay. Uh, so uh, this, this week your team is at Creswell. Um, what are one or two things you would really like to see your team improve on this week uh, in that game, regardless of the outcome, win or lose, one or two things that you really want to see your kids and your team improve on. Well, first is taking care of the football. We can't have the turnovers that we had last week. Um, no matter who you're playing, uh, you give you give teams an opportunity to uh, to get the ball more than they more than they should, and, and you end up putting yourself behind and and trying to dig out of a hole. So that's first. We got to take care of the football. And the second one we've we've been emphasizing for the last month and a half is just to be more physical than the, than the team we're playing. Um, so we want our offensive and defensive line to be more physical than Cresswell's offensive and defensive line. And we feel like if we can win that battle, then, then that gives us a good opportunity to win. Well, that's great. Hey, um, you know, you were saying that you needed some help this week from Blanchett to get into the playoffs? <clears throat> yes, that's correct. Uh, Right now we're in a three-way. Well, if we should win and and, and Sal should win uh, and Blanchett should lose, we would be in a three-way tie for third place. And the way our tiebreaker goes, um, Blanchett and Sal would make it and we would be left out. So if Blanchett should win, they should beat Harrisburg. That puts Blanchett in third place by themselves, and it makes Sal and, and ourselves tied for fourth. And since we beat Sal in a head-to-head -head competition, uh, we would go to the playoffs and Kyle would not. Boy, you almost need a math degree to figure that out, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we, you know, we've been looking at it pretty heavy since uh, since we beat Kyle uh, two weeks ago. That that night, we looked at it. We we have it pretty. We had it pretty well figured out exactly what we needed to have happen uh, last week and what we got to have happen this week. So, um, unfortunately, because of not winning some games at the beginning of the year. We've we've made it so that we have to rely on other teams to help us out, and that's mm -hmm. never a good thing when you're right. trying to get it, get into the playoffs. Okay, well let's um, let me ask you this, uh, Coach Miller. Um, what, what are one or two things you might say to your team um, this week in practice uh, to get them pumped up for the game against Creswell? That's a rival, not not so much a technical point like um, you know offense or defense, but. Right. A motivational thing. What's one or two things you might say this week about Creswell to get your guys going? Um, you know, we we just we talk. You know, you, you hear probably hear the same thing from every coach. We talk about just worrying about ourselves mm -hmm. and worrying about getting better. And so we don't we don't often talk about the other team and you know the rivalry that exists or doesn't exist. 
we talk about, you know, getting better. Uh, you know, I don't don't want to share all our secrets. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll embellish on, on one. A few weeks ago, I told my offensive lineman a, a short story about, um, and, and it's and it's all out on YouTube. I mean, anybody that wanted to, to view it could view it. But it's a story about a, a, a gentleman or a young guy that wanted to be successful. And he, he asked the most successful and richest person he knew if he would help him. <clears throat> and the long, the long and the short story is that the, the guy told this, this young man that when you want to be successful more than you want to breathe, that's when you'll be successful. Hmm. And so we took that. When we played style, we took that in, and that was kind of our mantra that, that we wanted it more than we wanted to breathe. And hmm. we talked about it all week, and we talked about it last week. And i got to be honest, the line, the offensive and defensive line has played really well um, last week against Harrisburg and the week, the week before that against style. And, uh, you know, if we can continue that, and I, and I continue to tell them that, hey, want it more than breathing. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that gets our kids focused. They understand when I say more than breathing that they're lacking some focus and they got to start focusing again. Well, um, that's great, Coach Miller. I was out at the Jefferson game um, a few weeks back, and if I remember right, your guard, your two guards and your center are all sophomores, and uh, that's a line that's young and improving and bodes well for the future. So thank you for sharing that. No problem. Yeah, we have uh, not only three sophomores, but we start our two tackles are juniors. So. You're right. Right. Um, you know, we should return all five of our guys next year, which would be very um, – should should bode well for us next season. Well, yeah, the first game of the year, you guys played Dayton tough in a 14-10 to loss at home. Dayton is number five in the OSAA RPA ranking and 8-0, and that was the closest game of the year for Dayton. What game do you think has been the best overall effort this year for the Pleasant Hill Billies? Um, you know, that was a pretty good one, but I'll, I will go back to uh, – Two weeks ago, when we played Sile, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know we had our backs up against the wall. We had to win to continue to give ourselves a chance to to, uh, to be in the playoffs, and our kids knew it. And they practiced uh, really well all week long with great effort, intensity, and focus. And they came out and played that way. Um, it was a close game. We were down by well, we were down by ten at the end of the fourth quarter, and. Uh, and we just didn't have any give up, and our kids continued to be focused and intense, and um, we came out with a, with a win. I would say that that probably was a signature win, not only for this year, but for our entire program. It was it was mm -hmm. a big win, and, yeah. and it showed the effort that the kids can give week in and week out. Great, great. Um, Coach Miller, uh, This uh, first of all, this is Prep Talk. You're listening to Prep Talk. Uh, this is uh, Kirk Miller. He's the co-head coach at Pleasant Hill. Um, if you had a vote, Coach Miller, what teams would you put as the top three in the state of Oregon 3A classification? If you, if you had a top three, and I know I'm putting you on the spot, so I'm trying to give you a couple seconds to gather your thoughts, but what are your top three in, in 3A? Well, you know, we've actually <clears throat> been pretty lucky in the fact that we've gotten to play a lot of the really top-notch mm -hmm. teams this year. I agree. And the ones that we didn't get to play this year, we saw last year. For yeah. example, Nissa. We played Nissa in the state playoffs last year, and we were really impressed uh, with them um, last season. And I know they were really young, and they're and they're on fire again this year. Um, you know, so I'll have to say, you know, that probably probably the team that impressed me the most uh, defensively was probably Sanium Christian, and they got to be put up pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at Dayton, they're they're the state champion. Yeah. They're undefeated. Yeah. I can't see how you could go away from them being in the top three. Right. And then, and then you know, for me, it'd be a toss-up because I haven't actually seen them this year. It'd be a toss-up with, with Harrisburg and, and Nissa as far as that, that other third, I mean, not necessarily in that order, yeah. but the third team that you're asking about. Those would be, you know, I, I went four, but those yeah. would be my top four teams. Fair enough. Just the, just in what I've seen and, and what I've seen last year, what I know, right. those would be the four teams I would pick to be in the oh, I think that's a pretty solid top four. Well, and I like the logic behind it because yeah. uh, you went with the teams that you've either seen this year or last year, and, and you're also saying there's teams out there that could be good that I haven't seen. So that makes perfect sense to me, and I think our listeners would uh, follow that as well. Marvin, you got a question for Coach Miller? Yeah. Um, hey, Coach, can you give us one or two players on your team that have impressed you this season, either with their play, work ethic, and practice, leadership outside of football, et cetera? 
Well, number one has got to be our offensive uh, leader in, in yards and touchdowns and all that stuff is, is Charlie Ward. Um, you know, a few weeks ago against uh, Jefferson, he had over 300 yards rushing and seven touchdowns in, in one half of football. Yeah, we have um, him. He's, he's a pretty special football player. Uh, um, just has some natural instincts. And, and, he, and he works hard on the field. And I'll tell you what, he's a great student, 4.0 student. Uh, a, right. a kid that everyone in our program should look up, look up to, and strive to be like. Yeah. Not necessarily his ability, but how he practices and how he and how he behaves in school and how he how he pulls all the all the good grades in school and all that stuff. Great. You know, he's he's a role model. Um, you know, I guess the next one I would have to throw out there, and it's just because of of what he's done for us, is is our <laughs> our third string quarterback. Uh, Landon Housel. Mm-hmm. Um, both of our, you know, we had two quarterbacks going in the year that were battling for for the starting role. Um, one one hurt himself after a few weeks and was done for the year, and then the other one hurt himself about oh three four weeks ago, and he's done for the year. And and we thought we were in good shape with two quarterbacks, and we lose both of them, and now we're playing a receiver at quarterback. And Landon Housel has done a great job for us and given us an opportunity to win football games. And that's pretty tough to do when you're the third string quarterback, guy that yeah. never practiced there until we threw him in at the last second. Um, you know, I think it was two days before we play a football game. We throw him in there and tell him, "Okay, you got to do it because we ain't got nobody else." Yeah, great. Um, he's he's impressed me. He's done a really good job, and we're we're pretty lucky to have him. Otherwise, we could be in a whole lot of trouble. You know, I, I've seen where <laughs> it's kind of funny, even at the college ranks uh, nowadays, where. It seems like the receiver and quarterback positions are getting more and more interchangeable these days. Well, I think the the, the receivers kind of get an idea of what the quarterback has to do because they're out there running the route, you know, understanding the concept of, of, of where their route positioning is so that they can either make themselves open or draw the defense away to make the other guy open. So I think the transition from – Receiver to quarterback is easier than sometimes running back to quarterback because when you're the running back, yeah, you understand the run game, but sometimes you don't understand the pass game as well, and it makes it a little more difficult. So I can see why receivers transition uh, to, to quarterback somewhat easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you give us two or maybe three names for possible player of the year honors for your conference other than a player on your team? Uh, oh, it could be offense or defense. You know, I, I got to be honest, I, I, I lack names. I'm not I'm not real good with names, but I can tell you that... Uh, <laughs> you know, that, Coach Miller, uh, that's the way it is with all the coaches we ask this question of. They know the numbers because they see the film, but the name, uh, not so much. Sometimes slips, yeah. I'll tell you what, the uh, the young man that plays quarterback for Harrisburg, yeah. you know he's only a freshman, but he's impressed me. Um, he, he doesn't turn the ball over. He does not throw interceptions. Yeah. Um, that's pretty impressive for a freshman. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, so, so I would have to say that he might be one of those guys. Um, Danny and Christian's got some really good athletes that, that run the football for him. You know, if one of those guys has piled up a bunch of yards, I could see one of those guys um, being uh, being a player of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Sile or not Sile? I'm sorry, Blanchett. They're they're running back. I believe that's one kid. I believe I remember his name. I believe his name is Ruiz. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, he was a tough runner. He's not very big, but, but fast, and he runs well between the tackles. He's, he, he could be another one that would be a player of the year in our league. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's get one more question before we cut you loose here. Uh, this is Prep Talk, and we are speaking with Kirk Miller. He's the co-head coach of the Pleasant Hill Billies. Coach Miller, you share the head coaching duties with um, – Randy Fisher. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that setup and maybe some of the positives of having two head coaches and and if there are any uh, drawbacks with having two head coaches out there? Um, it, it's going well. Um, you know, Randy and I came, came back to the program both for the very same reason. Um, he has, he has a, a son that's a senior this year and will be graduating. And I have a son that's an eighth grader. will be a freshman next year. And both of us wanted to come back. Uh, both of our kids, even though we were teaching at different places, both of our kids were going going to school in Pleasant Hill and we're going to play in the program. And we wanted the program strong for our kids, mm-hmm. uh, plain and simple. That's That really is the reason that the both of us decided to do this. Um, the athletic director at the time sat us both down and said, you know, you both want this. Um, I don't think it will end up very good if one gets it over the other. 
So why don't you guys think about doing it together? So we sat down and talked about it for a long time, and um, and we decided to go ahead and give it a shot. And we've been doing it now for five years together. Um, it's worked out pretty good. Yeah, we share I see. we share responsibilities. Uh, you know, we we share responsibility for developing the offensive game plan. We share responsibilities for developing the defensive game plan. Um, his his dad, we we everyone calls him Gramps. Uh, Gramps calls our defense for us. Um, but Randy and I, uh, along with Gramps, developed the defensive game plan. Um, Randy and I call the offense together. Um, he, he yells it in from the sideline, and I'm looking from up the stairs and, and giving, giving my input and my suggestions um, from the box. Okay. Uh, so that's how it's worked. Um, you know, I don't know how you can argue with uh, in five years, you know, being the playoffs three of, three of those five years. Yeah. Actually, it's been six years. I'm sorry. It's been six years. But being in the playoffs – for three of those six years and, and possibly up, up to four or five. I forget how many it is now. Yeah. Um, we've had, we've had a lot of success and we've had really good kids too. Um, kids that work really hard for us. Um, I think we play off of one another. Um, you know, just like parents, sometimes uh, he plays the bad guy and I play the good guy. And sometimes he plays a good guy and I play the bad guy, <laughs> but, yeah. but it works out. It works out. And we get the kids motivated. We get the kids to do them doing what we need them to do so that they can be successful. Yeah, great. Uh, so that's how it's worked. You know, I've, I've enjoyed working with Randy. I've learned a lot from him. I hope he, he could say the same thing that he's learned from me, and and I'm a better coach because of working with him. And like I said, I hope he could say the same thing. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time tonight, uh, this afternoon. This has been uh, Kirk Miller, the co-head football coach at Pleasant Hill. Uh, good luck uh, to you and your team uh, the, against Creswell this Friday, and thank you again for speaking with us on uh, Prep Talk. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good evening. Welcome back to Prep Talk. Hey, Chris, that was a great interview with co-head coach of Pleasant Hill, Kirk Miller. I agree. You know, he was a, a nice, uh, talkative fellow. He shared a lot of information with us. I, I liked how he said, I can't give away our game plan and too much, but... Um, you know, I, I enjoyed that interview with with Kirk Miller, and I enjoyed that uh, when he talked a little bit about the dynamic of being a co-head coach. You know, I, I just think our listeners are going to say, hey, well, that's one of the few schools that has that in the area, and I, I appreciate him answering that because he probably gets that a lot. You know, what's it like to be a co-head coach? Yeah, it, you know, the thing that I liked the most was him talking about the playoff picture in that mathematical equation that they have yeah. figured out how they can get into the playoffs because yeah. that's... Um, I've know. had to read that over two and three times, and I'm still not sure. Oh. I know that I know that uh, Pleasant Hill has to win. They have to beat Creswell. Yeah. And then I think Blanchett has to win, I think, is the other one. Is that what he said? I think so, and, I, yeah. and or Sayo lose. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, he explained it, and I'm going to take his word for yeah. it because this is, this is the again, you know, we're going to talk about the playoffs here coming up in just a little bit, but this is where... I actually like the 5A playoff is pretty straightforward. And I know it takes away from winning your league championship, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's still, the playoffs are straightforward. You know exactly where you fall and where you're going to be. And, um, you know, the, when you when they take the, the top yeah. four and there's, you know, teams beating up on each other in the middle there, it yeah. gets complicated. You're right, and I, I, will, I will agree with you partially on that. 5A is a little cleaner is in the sense that you got to be in the top of these rankings to make it. But I like the fact that, you know, if you're the top three in your league, you make the playoffs based on that. One of the challenges, I think, is that each league is different because the ADs of those leagues get together and say, if there's a tiebreaker, we're going to use this formula. Some go head-to-head, right. then some go, you know, so it's confusing from around can, the state. Yeah, you can get all the way down to how many points you've scored on the season. And it can be different from one league to the next. Absolutely. They, they, they don't, maybe don't go head-to-head. Or Do you remember that one year a few years back where Springfield won their last game and then they had to go into the end zone with uh, an AD from another school. Three ADs from the school met in the end zone. They had a coin flip to see who was the team that was going to go to playoffs. So Skip Raish was still coaching for Springfield then, and wow. that's just not ideal. You know, you find out from yeah. a coin flip that your team didn't make the last playoff spot. So might as well go to Vegas and lay some money on it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, we're going to talk about uh, the upcoming playoff games now, and uh, again, three A is in their final week of the regular season, so they're not uh, in playoff mode just yet. Yeah. Um, but, 
Um, well, let's uh, let's go through those games for the teams that are still in the final week of their season before playoffs. So, yeah, let's do that. Three A Pleasant Hills at Creswell. They need a win to get in the top four of the Pack West to make the playoffs, and they need some help. I don't remember exactly what that is, um, but listen to the interview again with Kirk Miller uh, from Pleasant Hill High School to figure that one out. Harrisburg is at Blanchett. Harrisburg likely to win the conference. Yeah, and uh, they'll they'll get a, a, a week one bye, and. Uh, you know, then the well the rest, deserved. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely well deserved, and they'll need, um, or the rest of the teams will need everything else to uh, mm-hmm. fall out in order to determine where they're going to be for the playoffs. And two A also has a final uh, game, uh, not playoffs yet. Uh, Oak Ridge at Oakland. What about one A there, Marvin? They still have one more week to the regular season. Right. You got uh, Mohawk is at Triangle Lake, Mableton is at Lowell, McKenzie at Yonkala, and Silence Valley at Crow. Lowell has pretty much wrapped things up, I think. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not. I don't. I doubt that Mapleton will give them too much of a, a trouble. But uh, you know, Triangle Lake still. They're going to make it. They're going to make it, and I'm sure that they, you know, yeah. want to want to uh, end on a winning note there. So. Yeah, and I think uh, Young Call is also in too. That's uh, right. So that's that's good news to hear. You're mentioning that last time they went to the playoffs was 2001. Isn't that a neat story? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, I know that that school, uh, in. Uh, Years past have had some difficulty putting teams together, so mm-hmm. it's great to see them back in the playoffs. I think uh, they they were a two A school uh, last time that occurred, but um, for special district uh, automatic qualifiers, um, special district five, um, three teams are going to make it, and I believe those are probably going to be uh, those will be the three teams. Uh, yeah, then. yeah, Lowell, Triangle Lake, and Young Collin. All right, well, um, if uh, if you don't mind, I'll start off. Uh, let's talk about the playoffs, switch to playoff mode, and I'll start it off with 6A. Okay. Sheldon, of course, uh, high enough in the league where they're going to get a bye this week. Yeah, top four from, uh, well, I always call it the Southwest or the Southern Oregon Conference. It keeps changing names, but it's officially listed on the USA website as Special District 1. Mm-hmm. They couldn't come up with an, any more creative name than that. Well, maybe they'll rename it again now that the reclassification mm-hmm. has now been approved. I think it should be a special, special district. <laughs> um, Thurston is going to be at Beaverton, so they'll be traveling uh, up to the Portland area. Now, they do have one common opponent, uh, and that was Aloha. Uh, Thurston lost to Aloha 37-34 to the first game of the season. Uh, really close game. They were in it, uh, lost it there in the fourth quarter. Uh Beaverton defeated Aloha 29 to 21. So hmm. similar scores there. So comparables. You're yeah, doing the comparables, huh? Yeah, they're yeah. I'm going with the comparables, and so I think, uh, you know, I I would I would uh, go out on a limb and say Thurston may have a shot here this week to, uh, yeah. to get a win on the road. So let me ask you this: since I didn't stump you in the trivia with Stump Marvin, if you're Thurston head coach Justin Stark and you get to choose two games of film that you want. From Beaverton, do you think they choose that Aloha game for one? You know, I I would probably say no, just because you've already played Aloha, you can go back mm-hmm. and look at that game film and and see maybe what you. Uh, but you wouldn't want to see how Beaverton does against a, a know, common opponent on film. I just you know I just I don't think so. I think I'd want to see mm-hmm. maybe how they played. Um, you know, somebody, somebody out of conference, maybe, or okay. or, or, or somebody that how uh, they did against Jesuit, maybe. Yeah, maybe somebody that uh, okay. was first or second in their league. See how they they matched up there. But uh, you know, I I, you know, what do I know? I'm not a head coach, so. Well, this is a question we, I think we could ask some head coaches. You know, yeah. um, uh, some of the coaches that we're going to have on in the future is, you know, you don't want to give away any secrets. You don't want the coach to give away any secrets. But I, I'm just wondering what their thought process is there. Which games they because I think they get to choose two. Um, and it might vary from one classification to the next, but it's always curious as to which games they want. Certainly, the biggest issue is what games have we already got on film? We don't need to ask for that one. You know, and I and I think it boils down to how much time they have to prepare. Yeah. So, you know, I I I think it's a great question to ask any of the coaches that we're going to have on the upcoming shows. Uh, yeah. So keep that one. We'll make a note of that. Yeah. Is there another six A game? Yeah, South Eugene is traveling up to Westview. Okay. Um, you know, Westview is is going to be, you know, at the top of the rankings for the uh, uh, bottom twenty that uh, are you know uh, that have to do a play-in round. So I, I would assume this would be a tough uh, 
tough road to hoe for yeah. uh, South Eugene. But Westview's number 18 in the rankings, and South has to hit the road. South, um, you know, started the season with two wins and, and hasn't uh, had any luck since then. I wonder if there's any common opponents there that we can look at between South Eugene and Westview. Um, South and Medford, there is, maybe. There is South Medford. So uh, Westview played South Medford and actually won 28-24. Uh, to 24. Um, and um, uh, South Medford uh, beat up on South Eugene, unfortunately, 32-7. to seven. So yeah. um, South Eugene, you know, two wins to start the year, and we kind of figured those would be their chances to win. I, I also thought they had a chance against Crater, um, but they are on a eight-game, what is it, a seven-game losing streak? Yeah, um, I, you know, if, if I can play coach there for a minute, if I was Chris Miller in this circumstance, I think I would, you know, you're getting an extra game essentially, and mm -hmm. I would spend uh, this last week, um, you know, it's similar to what Kirk Miller said, yeah. and really just trying to uh, look to the future and, and keep the kids' attitudes positive. Yeah. And, um, Is it a cliche, you've got nothing to lose, but it can still be true? I, I think so. They've yeah. got nothing to lose, and, uh, I, and I think that having an attitude like that, you can go up and yeah. uh, surprise some people. So who knows? And I, I certainly yeah. wish uh, South Eugene good luck in going up and Yeah, I think that would be great if they could go up there and get a win. The, the reality is it's a tough conference they're from. You know, Sheldon, boy, they've done well this year. Uh, Roseburg's, what, in the middle of the pack of the conference, and they were a top-10 team for Absolutely. most of the year. Grants Pass has done well. North Medford has done well. I mean, there's there's four or five teams right there that just are in the top of the rankings. Well, North um, Medford kind of came out of nowhere this year. Yeah. You know, they I don't think North Medford was projected to do as well as they did. Certainly, I, I, I believe the coaches poll at the beginning of the season had Sheldon winning the league. So, um, yeah. you know, any anything is possible in high school football. I say that over and over again. Yeah. Well, I think in the top 20 of the final RPI rankings uh, from the Southwest Conference, you've got you've got Sheldon at uh, four, North Medford at seven, um, Grants Pass is 15, uh, Roseburg is 19, and South Medford is 25. So you have five teams from the from the conference in the top 25. I mean, it's I can make a case for that being one of the best conferences in the state. I know the Metro's always tough, but yeah, the Metro's tough. You know, with Jesuit, Central the, Catholic, yeah. Three Rivers is is tough uh, as well. Uh, Central Catholic's not in the Metro; they're in the uh, they're even in the Three Rivers. They're in the Three Rivers. That's but right. you know, the Metro's got you know uh, uh, Jesuit, uh, Beaverton, Loa, Westview. You know, so yeah, I, that's a side note anyway. But anyway, good luck to South Eugene and Thurston. I'd love it if both those teams could get a win on the road. Uh, extend their season a bit. What about, um, I'll go to five a, or 4A, Marvin. Cottage Grove won the Sky M. They get a bye. Junction City will be at uh, Central. That's going to be a tough one for Junction City, but I think they can maybe do it if they run their veer and slow things down, don't make any turnovers, kind of control the game. Mazama's at Elmira. I like Elmira's chances there. Yep. Sweet Home at Sayusla. I think that's going to be a good game. Um, Sayusla only one loss. Um, unfortunately, you know that one loss is enough to make them second in their league in the uh, far west. So they get they get an extra game. They get an extra game and they get yeah. a home game. And they, it's at home. Um, I, I I look for Sayusla to to win that game against Sweet Home. So I I don't think they're going to have too much difficulty there. And uh, but but good luck to all the four A teams. Yeah. And uh, you know we'll we'll certainly. You know, and the nice thing is, is it, the playoffs are a surprise every week. So we have no idea what it's going to look yeah. like until the games are played and then we get to start putting uh, teams into the slots. Can there. you imagine all of the planning that's going on? You've got some assistant coaches and some film guys that try to project who the next opponent <laughs> is. You may have some film crews at two or three different games this Friday night because they're not sure who they're going to play, possibly. So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's some scrambling going on with uh, the films, I'm sure. So, well, what about 5A, Marvin? Let's conclude with some 5A games. Uh, 5A, uh, Springfield gets a bye because, again, in the 5A playoff system, the uh, goes strictly by the RPI, and Springfield is in the top eight RPI, so yeah. they get a bye uh, this week. Marist uh, is at Wilson, and uh, Marist was <laughs> the funny, the interesting thing here, and this is how this RPI system works, Marist was in position... Uh, last week to host a play-in game, but by playing North Eugene, who was winless, 
actually dropped their RPI and they ended up uh, on the other side of that and now they have to they have a road game. Yeah, isn't that uh, strange how that can work out? It's uh, pretty unbelievable. Yeah, I wanted to also mention about Springfield. A well-deserved uh, rest for Springfield. Uh, they won the, they didn't win the league, but they're f high enough up number three in their RPI yeah. ahead of Ashland. Uh, so Springfield players will get a chance to rest up, and I think the players and coaching staff could use a little rest too, which uh, <laughs> might be good this week. Um, you know, the interesting thing is I've always said this with the 5A RPI system is third – in the RPI is the place to be mm -hmm. because uh, the way the brackets are set up, you know, it's you know one through sixteen, but they set it up so that in the semis, one if everybody won out, mm -hmm. everybody played the way they should, one would play four, and two would play three. Oh, okay. And gotcha. those the semifinals are always played at Willamette University in Salem, so it's a neutral field. Mm -hmm. And so being in position three, of course, position two isn't too bad either. Um, but being in either one of those positions, you are really have set yourself up to get yourself in that state championship game. Yeah. And that's always exciting. Well, I think the folks at number one say one's the best position. Well, you know. <laughs> hard to argue with that. It's hard to argue with that, except you have Sherwood in 5A this year. So, yeah. you know, that's uh, kind of, it. that kind of goes without saying. Uh, Sherwood yeah. being the. And that's a well-deserved number one for Sherwood. It they is. ran the table. The interesting thing about 5, or excuse me, 6A is that uh, Jesuit is the number one seed at 7-2. and two. Central Catholic is undefeated 9-0, and oh, and they're the number three seed. They actually beat Jesuit in the Holy War that's earlier right. this year. So somehow Jesuit's tougher non-opponent uh, schedule with two losses. Two losses. Yeah, well, when it, comes down, when it comes down to seeding, though, you know, once you get to that point where they're, they're, they're slotting in the bracket, mm -hmm. Central Catholic's not in a bad spot. Oh, yeah. Because if they want one out and Tiger's at number two... If Tiger wins out, then they'll play each other in, yeah. in the 6A semifinals, and they'll get another shot at Jesuit if they run the table in the playoffs. I'm very excited for 6A playoffs because if you look at these top four, Jesuit, 7-2, and two, they're number one in the RPI. Tiger, Tiger is the secret. They're 9-0 and oh at two. Central Catholic, 9-0. Remember, remember talking oh. to some of those 6A coaches, they, they all had Tiger yeah. as number one. Justin Stark mentioned that in one of our previous shows interview. You betcha. Yeah. Central Catholic, 9-0. and oh. They've already beat Jesuit and Sheldon. Sheldon's number four. They have some nice wins. South, or excuse me, North Medford is 8-1. They're at number seven. They've already beat Sheldon. So there's five or six teams that could really win this uh, 6A championship six, this year. 6A is mm -hmm. any, anybody's game. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, 5A, uh, you know, if if Sherwood doesn't run the table in the playoffs, I would. That's going to be a surprise to everyone. Yeah, but 6A I, I is anybody's right. game. I think you're exactly right. What a flip flop. 5A is everybody's sort of waiting for you know you know to crown that because that's the way it's expected. But 6A is totally open. But I tell you, uh, Jesuits' tough schedule is probably going to help them out. They lost to Union in Washington, which is a really good team. A they great team they up could there. win it up there this year uh, in the big school 4A. For Washington and um, and Camus, excuse me, Camus is is probably a little stronger than Union. Union's a playoff team, but Camus is definitely stronger. I got those two mixed up, excuse me, uh, but both of those are, are good teams. So Jesuit lost to Camus and Central Catholic. Camus, the papermakers, they're the stronger team, uh, but Union is still good as well. Mix right. that up, sorry. That's okay. Uh, one other 5A game to note: Chris uh, Churchill is is uh, going up to Park Rose. You know, Churchill could get a win there. I agree. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, and we were talking about this earlier, I want our listeners to know, if Churchill and Maris both win, uh, Churchill would get the privilege of being the first to have the opportunity to knock Sherwood off. Hmm. Uh, unless, of course, someone below them uh, would uh, uh, win their play-in game, then, of course, you know, the lowest out of the play-ins gets number one and so forth. Marist would get a rematch with West Albany. Interesting. You know, and Churchill could do that because they, it seems like every year in the playoffs they beat somebody in that first round that you didn't expect them to. Yeah. What, didn't they go over to, to Redmond and really give Redmond a battle? Uh, they, they battled Redmond. Uh, Redmond was in the kind snow. of a surprise uh, 5A team last year, but yeah. the year before that they beat Wilsonville. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, I'm sorry. Three years ago they beat Wilsonville. Okay. When Wilsonville was a really tough team, they went up there and beat them. Yeah. Um, 
Last year they gave uh, Redman a, a, a good... Uh, a battle in the snow, if I remember snow, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I think Churchill could do that. They they seem to play better as the year goes on. I agree. And, uh, you know, it's really early. Who knows if Churchill they, will draw Sherwood, but, you know... Heck, heck, they played Springfield tough last week. They did. And way back when, Churchill... Um, they ran that offense. They ran a double wing and then a, a wing T, I believe. So they may not be too surprised to see it from Sherwood if they draw them. We're getting well ahead of ourselves. Oh, yeah. But I think you can tell how excited we are. The playoffs are here. I, I love playoff time. Yeah. Um, th- this is this is the time when uh, uh, the kids get excited, the parents get excited, and, you know, uh, yep. Good luck to everybody. All that hard work, you know, and that's uh, playoff time. Good luck to the teams. Um, next week interview is uh, to be determined. Uh, we'll probably have a team, obviously, that's in the playoffs. So we'll see who wins yep. on Friday, and we'll get our interview going for next week. Yep. So that's going to wrap up this edition of Prep Talk. Make sure to tune in for our, our next show and uh, for that interview. I'm sure it'll be a good one. Uh, check uh, out our Twitter account at Prep Talk Eugene. 